Welcome, my name is Jeff Schaefer and I'm going to be demonstrating Tableau. Uh, for purposes of this video, I'm going to be using Tableau 9 Beta. And uh, Tableau uh, 9 has not been released yet, but uh, I will be using uh, Beta version 8 here for the demonstration. Uh, it should be, Tableau 9 should be released in uh, the upcoming weeks, in the next uh, six weeks or so. So I thought it would be best to uh, demonstrate the things that I'm going to demonstrate in, in the upcoming uh, release version. So this is the opening screen of Tableau and uh, in in 9.0 it, it looks a little different than it has in the past. Uh, front and center are my most recent visualizations that I've opened and worked with and uh, so in the top row you can see some of the visualizations that I've created uh, and are showing up there that were recently opened. Uh, along with uh, some other visualizations. The bottom row, for example, here is uh, some final projects from my data visualization class at the University of Cincinnati. You can pin visualizations in here, um, and so uh, they, they'll, they won't ever leave, um, or you can just um, let it show you the most recent visualizations that, um, that you've been working with. In addition to that, in the bottom, there are some sample workbooks that Tableau has provided. Uh, to give you an idea of what can be done in Tableau. On the left side, you'll see connect, and this is where you connect to files or data. Uh, so to a file section has Excel, a text file, where you would put in a CSV file, uh, access database, or a statistical uh, file for SAS or SPSS or R, um, or other file types. And then if you connect to a server, you can connect to a Tableau server, a SQL server, MySQL, Oracle, some other databases. And there's a, a section there for, for more servers which are available. And uh, down at the bottom, we have uh, saved data sources. These are sample data sources that Tableau provides, uh, canned data that is provided in, a, um, in Tableau for you to work with, which is what we're going to be working with for purposes of, of this particular demonstration. On the right hand side, uh, Discover tab, uh, there's some training videos. There's a view all and that'll take you to, to view all of the training videos. Uh, and there's, there's a number of videos that are sequenced uh, through various training. Uh, and then there's a Visit the Week, which has a link to the ongoing Tableau public visualizations. They, they have a, a Visit of the Day that is published uh, for the weekdays. And then uh, showcased in here is, is a Visit of the Week. Uh, which takes you to a Tableau public visualization. These are these are great ways to learn what people are doing, how they're doing them, uh, because if a visualization is out on Tableau public, uh, it's available to download in most cases, and uh, you can dissect what the author has built, uh, which is a great way uh, to learn Tableau. And then finally, there's some resources for the uh, blog, uh, Tableau Customer Conference uh, in 2015 in Las Vegas, and uh, the forums. So to begin, uh, I want to jump right into a data set. So I'm going to use the Superstore data, which is a, a common data set uh, that people work with in Tableau. Uh, so I'm going to click on Superstore there and uh, open up the Superstore data. And when I do that, uh, we'll see over on the left-hand side of the screens um, the data. And I'm going to make this window just a little bit bigger so that we can see uh, all, the, all the field names, that, the, that it's long enough to see all those field names and give us a little more room to work with over there. When I open up any data set, uh, what, I, what I like to do first is go up to the data set itself. Um, you'll see a database container, and in this case, the data, only data set that's open is Sample Superstore. I'm going to right-click on Sample Superstore and click View Data. And when I do that, I'm going to get uh, what looks like a sort of a mini Excel spreadsheet. It's going to give me 10,000 rows of, of data from, that, uh, from, from this data set, and uh, I'll be able to view this data um, in, in, and kind of look around. Uh, so I, I like to do that first. I can see, you know, we have some, some text fields, category, uh, city, uh, for, for location, a uh, customer name um, looks to be a person, a date field for order date and an ID number, postal code looks like a zip code, uh, a text field for, for product name, uh, and then I have some other fields in here, segment, ship date, ship mode, um, 
that looks like the class of mail, whether it's standard class or first class, uh, state, uh, another ge geographic field, subcategory, um, and then I, I get into some measures. Um, we see a discount percent, we see a profit um, plus or minus, we see a profit ratio plus or minus, and a percent, um, a quantity number, and, um, and sales. Uh, there's also a field called number of records, and this is generated by Tableau. And any data source that you import into Tableau, there will be a column added for number of records. Uh, so that, that's actually not part of the original data set, um, but is calculated on import of any data set in Tableau. This window will also let you um, look at uh, as ascending or descending order in alphabetical order for a, a text field. So if I click on category, it will show me um, the, the category there, the cities in alphabetical order, or the custom na customer name in alphabetical order, or the date in rank order, and, and so on. So it does give you a good view into the data. I can also copy that. Um, in just like Excel, I can click on the corner uh, of the, the rows and columns and, and highlight everything, and I can copy that to a clipboard if I so choose. And uh, I, could, I could dump that into Excel if, if I needed to do that. Um, so that kind of gives us an idea of what, what the data looks like. Now when the data comes in, um, it, will, it will sort itself automatically into dimensions and measures. There's some further hierarchy that's taken place in this data set that has been done for you, uh, where you'll see the dimensions have been grouped, the fields in the dimensions have been grouped into groups uh, such as customer, order, location. Uh, so all of the geographic fields are, are together under location. The customer name and segment are, are sorted and, and put in, in the customer bucket there. Um, that has been done for you in this data set. When you bring in an, uh, a data set from the outside, that won't necessarily be the case. So you could certainly group things on your own um, and do that and, and make them to uh, put them together. Uh, but that, that's been done for you in this in this case. Uh, now we'll talk later uh, about uh, details of dimensions and measures. But um, just to kind of give you a broad idea, the dimensions at the top are really um, things that are not countable. They're things that you count by. And measures, in the broad sense of a measure, is something that you, that that is countable. Um, so what, when you're when you're creating visualizations or um, any kind of chart or graph, you're you're really asking Tableau a question, and you want to think about how you ask that question. And dimensions and measures are really the parts of the question that you ask. For example, I want to see how much profit by state. Well, that's a question. How much profit by state? And so how much or how many is typically a measure of something, and the something is usually the dimension. So um, how much profit by state, how much profit by city, how, uh, how much profit by customer. Um, so questions like that can be answered with, in broad terms, those dimensions and measures. Uh, Further, Tableau will do its best to categorize those dimensions and measures for you, uh, even on import. So in this case, you'll see customer name has an ABC next to it right here. Uh, segment has an ABC. That means it's, it's a string. It's a text uh, field. And um, down here under order date, there's a little calendar uh, icon. Uh, ship date has a calendar icon. That's because those are date fields. And then under location, you'll see state city and postal code all have little uh, icons for a globe because those are geographic fields. Um, move down to measures where we have discount was a was a percent if we recall and profit was a number a positive or negative dollar amount. Um, those are our numbers and so because they're number fields they have a, a, a number sign in front of them. Now you will notice that there are two geographic fields in measures down here, longitude and latitude. And longitude and latitude will, will oftentimes show up in measures. Um, in this case, they're in parentheses. You see the word generated. And that is because there is a geographic field in the database uh, that Tableau has figured out and auto-generated a longitude and a latitude for. Um, and so we have, in this case, a city and a state and a postal code. Well, um, Tableau is, is auto-generating the latitude and longitude based on those geographic um, fields that are provided. Number of records and measure values. 
uh, are also here. And down at the bottom, you'll see um, sets, uh, in this case, top customers by profit, and then parameters, which we'll, we'll talk about at a later time. Uh, but there's two parameters here that have been set, profit bin size and top customers. So that's kind of the general layout of the, the data tab uh, to get started in Tableau. So what I want to do is build a few data visualizations in Tableau and um, kind of walk you through how that's done and, and see where we can go with that. So the first thing I want to do is um, build a simple chart. And so what I'm going to do is, is quickly um, just do some data. I'm going to take the states. We have state, and I'm going to bring state over, I'm going to just drag it over uh, and we'll see the list of states across the country and uh, I want to see something by state. So let's show profit by state. That shows how much money we're going to make in the Superstore database by state. And we can see it's alphabetical order by default, um, but up at the top here I can see a, a descending and ascending um, buttons that let me uh, rank the, this information, I, I can put this in order. Um, so if I do, for example, um, I can I can show um, descending order, the most to least. California has 89, and, and New York, and and so on. Uh, now I this is an interesting data table, but there's a lot of states, right? There's 50 states listed here, and uh, and a lot of you know a lot of rows because of that. Uh, so let's let's do some graphing of this information to make that easier to see. So I'm going to click over here on the right side, in the, in the right-hand corner, there's a Show Me tab. And this is where Tableau will try to um, suggest for you different chart types that are available for the type of information that I'm using. Um, so in this case, I have state, and uh, state is a geographic field, so uh, I can certainly put that on a map. That's the suggested uh, number that is showing up is uh, a map with dots on it. And I can also do a shaded filled map um, that's available as well. Um, I could do a bar chart. Um, and so I'll click on bar chart to kind of show you what that looks like. But we could see that there's a bar chart showing the state with the top profit down to states that have, um, you know, negative, uh, negative profit. They're costing us money. Um, but in this case, because I have a map and I have um, the states, I'm going to click on a filled map and I'll get a, a nice map that, that Tableau plots based on the profit. Uh, now what they what is happening here is a diverging color scheme. What that means is there's two colors that are uh, diverging to a, a middle. Uh, in this case, red or green. Green for good, red for bad, the, the uh, well-known stoplight colors. Now, for data visualization best practice, we like to avoid red and green together. The reason for this is that uh, 10%, almost 10% of men are colorblind, 1% of women. And the primary problem with, with colorblind is that uh, distinguishing between red and green. Those colors really show up as, as sort of a brown, and uh, it's very hard for somebody who is uh, has color vision deficiency to be able to see the difference between red and green. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly change those colors. There's a, a box here called Some Profit, and there's a button that uh, you, you push. A lot of options are available on that right corner of uh, either the pill or the box. Um, so in the sum profit box there, I'm going to go to edit colors. And there's a, a drop down box right at the top that has all of the colors. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to orange blue diverging. And orange and blue is the same sort of color scheme as green and red. In this case, orange bad, blue being good, and has the same uh, divergent color scheme, diverging to the middle. And uh, we'll click OK. And now we have a colorblind friendly uh, map that shows the United States. Now while we're here, uh, I'm going to go up to Map. I click on map up in the in the toolbar and click map options and when I do that I generally like to clean up the map a little bit for example for business reporting we don't typically need land cover uh, we don't usually need the um, the country names you know that says the United States in the middle of it um, you may not even need the state names um, especially if you have them in a tooltip so you, you could get rid of the state names make that map a little cleaner 
Now, while we're doing um, some cleanup, we're going to go down to Sheet 1. Um, by default, when, when worksheets are created down here, um, they're, they're named Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Dashboard 1, Dashboard 2. That's not a very intuitive name, and it's not going to help us later. Um, so I'm going to right-click on that, rename the sheet. And I'm going to name it Profit, uh, if I can spell that correctly, Profit by State. And click Enter. And now I have a sheet named Profit by State. And I'm going to build a couple of these. So let's let's move on here. Right to the right side of Profit by State, you'll see three little icons. They have a plus sign. One is for new worksheet, one is for new dashboard, and one is for new story, which is story points in Tableau, which we'll talk about at a later time. So what I'm going to do is click New Worksheet to start another worksheet, another chart or graph, and uh, going to create something else for this particular for this particular category. Um, so I, I think another thing that we'd probably want to see is maybe sales over time. Uh, and so we need some sort of date element. If we go back to our data, we have an order date and we have a ship date. Uh, so I think we could look at uh, sales. We have a sales number and we could look at sales either by the time that it was ordered or the time that it was shipped. Um, both of those might be interesting. Uh, so let's take order date and we're going to bring order date over to the column when the customer made the order. And you'll see automatically it populated in 2011 to 2014. And I, I put that on the columns. I'm going to take sales. I'm going to bring that up to rows. Uh, so now I have uh, sales over time from 2011 to 2014. Uh, now, you'll see it up here, there's a plus sign next to year of order date. It starts by default as the year. If I hit the plus sign, it now does quarters. If I click the plus sign for quarters, it will go to months. If I click on months, it will go to day. Uh, so it'll go down to if I have whatever the date level I have in the database is, uh, I, can, I can go down to, to that level. Um, now in this case, this might not be he helpful to have year, quarter, month, and day. So maybe I just need the, uh, I'll get rid of day. I'll just drag it up off the canvas uh, and I'll get rid of quarter. You can drag it up here at the top or you can drag it back over here to the left. doesn't really matter. Um, but now here I have year and month. I can see year. 2011 to 2014 um, and I can see the month in, in which the sales are occurring and you can already see by this data there's there's some outliers jumping out like for instance December of 2013 uh, we have a, a really high point here of 126,000 which uh, is a really big number considering um, you know October th uh, before was only 48 um, so the this kind of shows um, you know, the power of, of visualizing this data. I'm just going to rename the sheet and kind of move on. Uh, rename, we'll call this uh, sales by year. Click enter. And I'm not going to worry so much about getting insights from this data just because this, uh, this is canned data that we're playing with in Tableau. So when we start working with real data sets, um, we'll, we'll pay a little more attention to um, learnings and key findings. I, I just want to really kind of talk about the tool and, and getting us used to using the tool. I'm going to go now and create another worksheet. Um, now this time around, I'm going to take a postal code, zip codes. I'm going to bring my zip code over. Uh, so I have a list of a lot of zip codes. You can see, you know, it looks like it's going forever. Um, an, another trick for you down down on the on the very bottom, it tells you how many marks how many rows by column. So very simply, I can see, I don't really know how many zip codes are there in that list. Well, down at the bottom, it'll tell me 631 uh, rows. So I, I have 631 uh, zip codes in this data set and one column. The column is, is postal code. So let's, uh, let's show profit uh, by zip code. And I'm going to bring profit over here to that second column. Just drag it right on top of the column. And uh, I'm going to order it just like I showed you before. So these two buttons up here that have uh, ascending and descending order. I'm going to rank these descending by profit. So I have the largest profit at the top. Um, but still, I have 631 zip codes. That's a lot of zip codes. And uh, I don't know how meaningful that is. So in this instance, um, uh, let me let me just work at uh, maybe the top 10 zip codes. Uh, and so what I want to do, um, there's again that that little 
arrow at the right of the pill in postal code. I'm going to click on that little arrow and click filter. I'm going to move over to the tab called top and I'm going to click by field. I'm going to say give me the top 10 of the postal codes by the field of profit. I want the ones with the most profit, meaning some profit, and that'll give me the top 10. Click OK, and now I have the top 10 zip codes by profit. Those are my most profitable zip codes out of 631. Those are the top 10 zip codes for me. I'm going to go to my Show Me tab, and I'm going to convert that into a little visual and see that in a bar chart. So there's my top 10 uh, zip codes in a bar chart. Um, there's other charts I could visualize this, like for example, maybe a dot plot. Uh, that's that's really helpful because I could see that these two circles here, especially this 10024 zip code, uh, is, is really an outlier compared to many of these other uh, zip codes that are available. Um, but I'm just going to click the back button for now and go back to uh, a bar chart. So uh, I'll uh, rename sheet 3, go down here to sheet 3, I'm going to rename this and uh, top 10 zip codes and I'm going to click on a new worksheet again. I'm going to create one more worksheet and um, in this worksheet I'm just going to create another just simple chart type. It, it doesn't really matter what it is um, but maybe I'll do a segment. So I'll bring segments over. Looks like there's consumer, there's corporate and home office and uh, maybe I want to do a uh, quantity. We, we did sales and we did profit. Let's just do quantity uh, by those three so we can see a quick quantity. And again, let's make that a bar chart. Um, good for categorical comparisons. Uh, so we'll do, a, we'll do a good, we'll do a bar chart there. Uh, keep it simple. So there's my fourth chart. I'm going to change sheet four. I'm going to rename that. And I'm going to call this... Um, quantity by segment and I'm gonna hit enter now I have four tabs down here at the bottom I could organize this a bit uh, so I could I could add color for example on profit by state if I right click there's a color tab right here so for example I can make the profit by state green I could make the sales by year um, brown um, give a little organization to the tabs down there if we're so inclined. Um, it's not really going to matter um, because I'm going to ultimately hide them in a second. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that functionality that I can, um, you know, categorize them by color or, or show, highlight them with color or whatever I need to do. Now, just like I added down here at the bottom a new worksheet, this time I'm going to move over one and I'm going to add a new dashboard. Click on Add a New Dashboard. And this is a slightly different screen than we've seen before. Um, in this case, I have my, my sheets are up here in the top left in the, in the dashboard window. Uh, and it, Tableau 9 gives you a nice feature when you highlight over each one of them. It gives you a little screen of what that visualization looks like. Uh, so what we're going to do is drag those onto our dashboard canvas. And I'm going to start by Profit by State, our map. And I'm going to take that map and I'm going to just drag it over, just click and drag over. And now I have uh, the profit by state map that I cleaned up uh, in the worksheet is now on my dashboard. And uh, so it's just it's just kind of front and center in the dashboard. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one, but um, you'll notice that something different happens this time. So when I take sales by year, that's a line chart, and I bring that over on my dashboard, you'll see that certain areas of the dashboard start to uh, have a gray highlight. Uh, and what that gray highlight is telling us is where we want the worksheet to be placed. Um, so in this case, the gray highlight is above the map. It's going to, the, the line chart will place in the visualization above the map. If I put it below the map uh, highlight down here it'll go below the map if I move my mouse to the left it'll now be on the left of my map and if I move it to the right it'll be on the right of my map but to the left of the legend um, profit and if I go all the way over to the right you'll see a very thin gray border that'll put the the line chart way over on the right hand side and in fact I'm going to just let go of the button you know and just drop it in there uh, so you can see what that looks like and then I can say to myself, oh, that's not really where I wanted it. I wanted to move that. Um, well, I could, I could 
click the window uh, and in the window I can decide where I want to move this to I have to move my mouse right up to the top there and when it's on the top you'll see a little double arrow uh, and click there and then I can move the window again back to where I was um, just a minute ago so I'm gonna now move it underneath my map and when I put the line chart underneath my map we can see we have a, a different layout here so it, it just kind of moves over I'm going to do the same thing really quickly now for top 10 zips. I'm going to put that my US map and then quantity by segment. I'm going to put that down on the bottom. Um, also uh, to the to the right of the, the line chart. And uh, now I now I have a dashboard. Now I think at this point we have to look at it and we have to think, OK, well, we, we built a quick dashboard. It didn't take us very many minutes to put this whole dashboard together. Um, but in doing so, I, I think we have to clean it up a little bit and, and really organize it a little better. The first thing that, that jumps out at me is that we have Profit Legend over on the right-hand side, which was placed by default in the visualization. Uh, but there's a lot of white space that's taken up because of that. And so we're, we're going to fix that in a second. I, I think a little better placement of some of these things on the dashboard might help us clean this up. In addition to this, you'll see rotated text uh, on our sales by year down in this area down here where the, the months are truncated in here. So that, that's difficult. It's not um, easy to read that. I think we could, we could do better. We have a lot of white space here generated because um, just because of the layout. So we're, we're, we're not using our space efficiently. So in this next portion here, I'm, I'm just going to go about cleaning some of this up. Um, so what I think I'm going to start with is maybe moving the quantity by segment up into this area maybe just moving it underneath the um, underneath the bar chart area here um, so I, I could put it there and, and give the line chart on the on the bottom um, but the state here is kinda the, the map is kinda crunched if I do that so I, I think if I do that I should probably put the uh, state map but now I have a lot of space up here I think the point of this exercise is to just show you, you kind of play with your windows and see what you know kind of the best placement is um, for some of this stuff uh, and by by trial and error moving these things around um, now keep in mind the focus of your dashboard when you do this you want to think about uh, your areas of where you place things you know your your top left quadrant here is really your focal point your most important piece of information your your bottom right uh, quadrant is really your least uh, important piece of information um, in the concept of if you have four quadrants uh, in this case I just uh, I don't think I need necessarily a four quadrant um, uh, setup for for our dashboard I think we can make a little cleaner dashboard in this particular format where my lines are going across the bottom uh, where I need the space especially for the labels uh, and I and I don't need all the space at the top now I still have space here with profit so what the way I'm gonna solve that one is I'm gonna click on profit and in that drop down I'm gonna make this a floating tile and by making it a floating tile it's gonna now let me put profit wherever that profit legend anywhere I want to put it and I'm gonna put it in a more efficient place like in this case on the map um, so now I've cleaned this dashboard up a little bit I mean it's a, it's a little more organized um, some more additional cleanup as I look around um, we see postal code. Well, I have top 10 zip codes in a title, so I, I don't really need these headers. Uh, so I'll right click on the header and say hide field labels for rows. I'll do that for segment down here where I have quantity. I didn't, I didn't spell quantity correctly, did I? Um, so I'm going to go down here and rename that. Notice that the names of my, um, my, my chart titles are coming from the tab names. Um, and it, they don't have to. I can click on quantity here and it, it says sheet name. I can say sheet name there, which is quantity. I can say by Jeff and, and click OK and it'll say quantity by segment by Jeff. Uh, so I could overwrite and put anything I want in there. Um, but in this case, uh, this is another reason why we want to name our sheets um, something more interesting than sheet one uh, it, you know think about over here if I had a list under my dashboard of sheet 1 to 26 and I'm trying to keep tabs uh, and keep track of, of which one is which uh, and then I have to go name each one of these again um, by title um, it's a lot of uh, duplicate work that, that really isn't necessary um, 
Okay, so quantity by segment. I don't really need that header in here, so I'm going to get rid of that header. Uh, and notice when I did that, I don't have the scroll anymore. That's nice, so I got, I got rid of the scroll. Uh, I have sale by year, um, and, and sales by year, um, I, I don't really need order date telling us that you know it's from order um, I could I could add that to my title too I could say sales by year uh, of order to make it uh, you know more explicit so you knew it was the order date um, now the rotated text down here we like to avoid rotated text generally best practice uh, it takes humans a lot longer to read text that is is rotated um, so I, I want to clean this rotated text up so how do I do that well I have a couple options um, canvas size might be an option like you'll see I have a lot of gray space on my monitor over here um, so I, I could play with the canvas size now to do that I click on my layout under dashboard and you'll see down here size dashboard there's a width of a thousand height of 800 I can make the width larger um, so I can make it 1200 or 1400 and you can see my dashboard you know is, is getting bigger here um, I'm not gonna take it any more than 1200 I, I think that's plenty um, but if I put it in presentation mode uh, you'll still see that I have these really long labels that are um, they're just problematic now there's lots of things I could do with that for example I could um, I could only show 2013 and 2014 if I didn't think all four years were necessary and then maybe my my labels would would fit um, another thing I could do is just format how I'm using the labels over and over and over again with full names of January and February so I can right click on those and format them and where it says format month of your order date right here in the dates it has the word January and I can abbreviate I can show the full name I can show an abbreviation uh, by using an abbreviation that's a three letter abbreviation um, still too big for this canvas size but I could also do uh, a, a first letter and so uh, in this particular instance uh, this isn't a rule for every visualization in every situation um, but because I'm trying to show four years uh, by month and trying to get uh, every single month in there um, this particular instance of a one letter uh, month is probably um, a good solution for for this particular visualization we do have a rotated text here uh, for sales um, this is a tableau issue tableau will not let you um, put that text in a horizontal placement uh, so there's a trick that you would have to use to do that uh, for tableau um, which i'll show you a, another time in this particular instance it's sales and i have sales represented in my title so in this particular case i think i'm just going to get rid of sales to do that i will double click on the word and right where it says sales i will highlight it and uh, click ok uh, just delete it and click ok and and now it, it's gone and so in that instance uh, it's a redundant piece of information um, in this particular visualization a uh, couple last points of cleanup um, i have some really good chart titles but overall I don't really know what this visualization is about I don't I don't really have a clear uh, understanding of what it is so you know dashboard titles are also important um, you can do dashboard titles in a couple different ways a very simple way is to just use a text box uh, which is is fine for formatting um, and I, I want to do it that way to kind of show you what happens with the dashboard when you place a text box on there um, anyway so uh, I'm gonna drag a text box all the way to the top I'm going to make sure the gray bar covers the entire top portion of the visualization and it brings up a test box uh, text box I'm going to call this Superstore uh, dashboard from the Superstore data while I'm in the text box I'm also going to format my title so I'm going to just highlight that center it um, maybe change the font type to something else uh, so I might just pick a different font type if, if I so desire I might make it uh, 24 um, font size uh, and now you can see I have a Superstore dashboard title uh, but the reason I did it that way is because I wanted to show you what happened to the dashboard all of a sudden pieces of information were, were moving around um, most importantly I want you to show you what happens with floating tiles um, 
Floating tiles are very handy and, and a great feature in Tableau that, that was added. Um, but the problem with floating tiles in this particular case is if my window is moving around, um, this tile is always in the same place where I placed it. It's floating over top of the canvas in the same place. It doesn't resize or move when the rest of the, the canvas does. Um, so something to be aware of. A uh, good rule of thumb is to always put your floating tiles in place at the end last. Um, so now I do have a title and uh, I might resize that reg legend while I'm here. Um, I don't want to resize it that small but maybe I'll just uh, resize it there and uh, move it over a little bit. And uh, so now I have, I moved it just too far because profit is now on the line there. Um, now when I added the title, I, uh, I, this is messed up here. Um, because now I have a scroll. I have a scroll up here and I have a scroll down here. Um, now quantity, I'm not so sure I need quantity because I have quantity by segment. Um, but either way, uh, let's just say I wanted to keep profit here because I don't have profit listed and I want to keep quantity there. Uh, but I want to avoid those scrolls. Well, in that case, I will make the bottom window smaller um, to the point where I can get rid of those the scroll. Um, always best to avoid scroll if you can. Um, sometimes it's uh, unavoidable if you need to show a lot of data, um, but in this instance there, there, there wasn't that much data. That was something that was easy to avoid. Um, it's always good practice to cite your data sources and your author, so I might add another text box. In this case I might make it a floating text box. Uh, so bring a small floating text box up to the corner uh, or maybe to the bottom of your viz. In this case, I'll just put it in the top corner and I'll uh, just type data source and, and author. Uh, so best practice, again, would be to you know list your, list your data sources and your author so people know who did it, who created this, the date or where the data came from, and, and who it is. Um, some final cleanups here. Just like I renamed Sheet 1 and Sheet 2 and Sheet 3 and Sheet 4, um, I have Dashboard 1 and Dashboard 2 and Dashboard 3. That's how Tableau is going to name its dashboards. So I'm going to right-click down there. I'm going to rename that sheet, give it something a little more intuitive than Dashboard 1. Um, in this case, I'll just say Superstore Dashboard uh, for purposes of this demonstration. But you know, be intuitive about the way that you name it. And if you want your user to come into the visualization and only use a single dashboard um, well help the help the reader out in that case um, because if they see this profit by state and these colored tabs they're going to start clicking around and in this case it's just redundant data this these these sheets are not needed uh, so you can always right click a sheet and hide it as long as you're using that sheet somewhere and another little uh, trick especially if you have lots of them select a sheet hold down your shift key and your, uh, and your right arrow, and it will highlight all three of those sheets at the same time, and I can right click, and then I can hide three sheets all at once. Now, I have a Superstore dashboard. Uh, I'm gonna put this in presentation mode, and uh, Superstore dashboard with profit by state, uh, top 10 uh, zip codes, our quantity by segment, our sales by year of order, uh, with a very clean um, access, uh, with our January through December, and uh, a good dashboard title, a good uh, data source, good author uh, list, um, a pretty clean dashboard following a lot of you know good data visualization uh, best practices. Uh, so for a first simple, uh, quick build of something in Tableau and give you the sense of, of, of what we're doing here, um, I, you know, this was real, um, very, pretty rudimentary but quick and easy uh, so I want to give you a, a, an example of that and uh, I hope that was helpful to you I will post this uh, make this uh, Tableau uh, workbook available to you along with the video